Evaluating quadratic functions using a graphing calculator. This video is intended for you to follow along. There are some intricate operations here that are going to be optimally learned if you actually follow along. If it moves too fast for you, you can stop the video at any time and roll it back and uh, to try to better understand what's going on. So please do that. There are key points in a quadratic function. We're going to go over a few of those at first here. First, there's a y-intercept. Every quadratic function has a y-intercept. There's a vertex. A vertex will be, in this case, a minimum for an upward-facing opening parabola. And if you have one that's downward opening, the vertex will be a maximum. Quadratic functions, most of them have x-intercepts. In this case, has two of them, where the function crosses the x-axis. And they're also known as root solutions and zeros. It's possible for a quadratic function to just have one x-intercept or even none at all if it doesn't cross the x-axis. In this case, our y-intercept has a value of 8. Our vertex has a coordinates of negative 1, 9. And these x-intercepts are negative 4 and 2, respectively. And you can have a quadratic function that is not, the key points aren't seen in your graphing calculator. Your graphing calculator view screen can be adjusted to be able to see these key points. You see at the left side you, quite, you don't quite see it and the very bottom you don't see it. So if we go ahead to our window view and make our x minimum value smaller and our y minimum value smaller, in this case we are making both of them negative 12 and graph them, we can see the x-intercepts, both x-intercepts and the vertex and the y-intercept. So let's look at this function first. We're going to graph it by going to y equals and entering these two binomials multiplied together. And these are what we call factors of quadratic function. If we graph them, we get this. And we can see the key points. We can see the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex. And if we press second, then calc, we get this, the calc menu. And we can find the x-intercept by going to 0. And we see, first of all, it's the question here below left bound. It's asking us to set a left bound for that zero. And we have the cursor blinking here in the middle. And we're going to arrow to the left of that left x-intercept. And as we do that, we're going to follow the direction of this red arrow to the top side of that x-axis. And then we press Enter. We get an inward-facing arrow. And we press, uh, it's asking us for the right bound. And so we go ahead and arrow down below the x-axis, and we get below the axis, it doesn't have to be exactly where mine is, you press enter that second time, we get 200 facing arrows, and then you press enter, and we get a 0 or x-intercept of negative 2. And of course, the y value for that x equals negative 2 is 0. Now we're going to find the x-intercept over the right side. And we do that by going to second trace, and we go down to the 0 menu again, and this time we're going to arrow, it's asking for left bound again, we're going to arrow over and follow the direction of that red arrow, and we stop short of crossing the x-axis, and we press enter, and now it's asking us for the right bound, so we arrow over the right, and once we get over the right, we press enter again, we have two inward facing arrows, we press enter, and we get x equals zero. Now if you set the boundaries both on the same side of the x-axis, or the x-intercept, you get an error message because it's going to look for that zero and not find it and give you an error message, but you'll, you'll learn that. And we're going to find the y-intercept by going second trace and choosing the value choice. And for x equals here, we're going to enter zero because that's going to give us our y-intercept where x equals zero. In this case, our y-intercept is negative six. Now we're going to find the vertex, and the vertex is, is pointed out by this little arrow here. And we're going to press second trace, and because it's an upward facing parabola, we're going to go find a, a minimum. We go down to three, and we see that our cursor is blinking over here to the left side, and so we're going to just going to press enter and get that inward facing arrow. Then we're going to arrow over a few strokes to that right side of that vertex, and press enter again, and then enter a third time, and we get a minimum value of x equals 0.5, y equals negative 6.25. So this summary, x-intercepts negative 2 and 3, y-intercept negative 6, and there's our vertex. Now, if we go back to our equation we entered in y equals, our x-intercept is going to have to be, one's going to have to be 3 because 
for this binomial on the left to be equal to zero, x would have to be zero because three minus three is zero. And also this other x-intercept, if in this case on the right side, if x is negative two, well then it would make this binomial on the right zero. So that logically explains what it means. Now, if we go to second graph, we can look at our table view. And if we see where y equals zero, this is another way of, of finding our x-intercepts. If we look down the y column and see where y equals zero. And also it gives us our x-intercept, just looking at table view, where x equals zero, that y equals negative six. So that's our y-intercept. Now the vertex, we can't see exactly where it is. We can see close to where it is between x equals zero and one, and between y equals negative six and negative six. Now let's enter this next function up here. and We enter it in y equals negative two x squared plus three x plus 12. And we press zoom six, we graph it, and we notice that we don't see up above that uh, vertex, so we can change the y max to a higher value, and now we see it. Now what about the x-intercepts? Looks like our x-intercepts are about negative two and then positive three, but if we go to our table view, we don't see a zero anywhere under y1, and so we don't know where our x-intercepts are positively, but we can see our y-intercept is going to be 12, where x equals 0, y equals 12. And we're going to find our x-intercepts by pressing second trace, then go to the 0, and we arrow, as for left bound, we arrow over to the left side, in this case below the x-intercept on the left, we press enter, then we arrow up to the right a few strokes, press enter again, we have two interfacing arrows, then we play, press enter, and we get a x-intercept of negative 1.8. Now we're going to check out this x-intercept over on the right side, and go ahead and find it. You're going to need to go ahead and arrow over to the right, and then uh, just stop the tape, and then come back when you have your answer. Okay, here's the x-intercept, the other x-intercept, 3.3. And now we can find the vertex by pressing second uh, trace, then going down to maximum. Then we go ahead and follow that red arrow over the left side of that vertex up top. We press enter, press enter again, and then go over to the right side. Once we get over the right side, we press enter, and it gives a maximum of 0.75 y equals 13.125. So there's a summary of what those values are. Now I want you to go ahead and try this one. Try y equals x squared plus 6x minus 20. And you might have to adjust your view screen window to see the vertex. So let's just stop the video and then restart it check your answers. Okay, here are the answers. x-intercepts uh, negative 8.4. And 2.4, a y-intercept of negative 20, and a vertex of negative 3, comma, negative 29. So to summarize, in this, in this video we used calc menu to find first the x-intercepts by choosing the zero from the calc menu. We found the y-intercept by, by uh, choosing the value function, and then going ahead and choosing x equals zero. And finally we found the vertex, either maximum or minimum, by using either 3 or 4 and setting the boundaries and press enter. So this should be very helpful to you. Go back and experiment around, and it should help you a lot and be able to evaluate quadratic and other types of functions as well.